I'm going to go through, there's three case studies. I'm going to go through number one and number three. So I'm going to do the first one. It's called um, Janice and Harold. And by the way, if your name's Janice and if you're married to a name, guy named Harold, I'm, I'm not talking to you about it. <laughs> okay? These names are just pulled out of the hat. They're married. They both are, are Christians. They have two children. Harold works full-time and Janice works part-time. Harold is a reasonable, but of course not a perfect money manager. However, unfortunately, Janice spends a lot of money often on unnecessary things, shoes, clothes, knickknacks for the home, with her credit cards. When the credit cards come due each month, there's generally an argument between Janice and Harold. Over the next several years, as the debts have accumulated, their marriage relationship has deteriorated. From Janice's perspective, she finds that her trips to the shopping mall help her to forget about her relationship problems with Harold, as well as the challenge of dealing with a rebellious teenager. Three years ago, Harold got really upset about the accumulated balances on her credit cards and the loan shark interest rate. So as a result, Janice and Harold took out a personal line of credit against the equity in their home. And they used the, uh, the line of credit to pay off their credit cards. Janice thought that this had solved their financial problems. She thought that that was a solution. But unfortunately, the balances on her credit cards have accumulated to a significant amount again. And it's a struggle to make the minimum payments each month. She's afraid to speak to Harold about it. So question, did the payment of Janice's credit card debts by way of the personal line of credit solve their financial problems? No. Not at all. That's an it's easy a one. It's just a bandage. Yeah. The debt restructuring did not solve her personal financial problems because the unnecessary and excessive spending continued after the debt restructuring. And she ended up accumulating even more when the credit cards were free. I see lots of people they go to their bank, they get a line of credit to pay off their credit cards, and, and they really believe they've solved their financial problems. They really do believe that. And they walk away. I think of two clients. They're both doctors. Doctors are smart people. Not they, financially. Not financially. <laughs> four times in a row, every, every three years, four times over 12 years, till the bank finally said no. We won't do it. And each time they thought they'd solve their financial problems. And fortunately, they've been clients for a long time, probably 30 years. Fortunately, it's, it's taken 25 years to convince them to follow my advice. And the advice, they're, they're not Christians, so I don't quote the scriptures, but I do give them biblically-based financial advice. And the last five years has been a huge change in how they manage money. And um, they're probably going to be okay for retirement. They've made a massive change. They, they, they sold their house and they rented. Um, but fortunately, you know, houses had gone way up in value and that helped a lot to pay off a lot of debts. But you can get smart people that think they're solving the problems and often the bank will present it like they're solving the problem for you, but they're not. So um, what's, what's the, um, what are the biblical financial principles that Jan has violated? Can you list them and give a reference to scripture? There's, a, there's several biblical financial principles she violated. She <coughs> shows lack, lack of contentment. She keeps going and buying stuff over and over, even though yep. she doesn't. It's not a need. She kept doing that. Yep, she's not content to live within the provision that God gave her. If you want a scripture, First Tim, First Timothy six says, "Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world; we shall take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that." I guess another point is uh, taking on too much debt for the uh, lender will be slave to the, or the, or the borrower slaver, slave to the lender. I was just going to say uh, spending money she does not have. Yep, and that's easy to do today with credit cards, lines of credit, all that stuff. It's really, uh, really easy to do. Okay, those are, there's another one. So she has a root cause problem. She needs some cr biblical advice yeah, yeah. how to spend money and, yeah. how, and to be probably exposed to biblical financial principles. Yeah. The probabilities are she has no idea what the Bible says on finances, even though she's a Christian, except for tithing. But what, do you think they're tithing? I tell you, they're not tithing. They're, they're looking after paying their debts. It says she has, she's using her, she has some problems, like she's having problems in her marriage and her children, and so instead of taking it to the Lord, she's taking it to the mall. So she's shopping and stuff like that, so to solve her problems. Exactly, yep, yep, yep. 
said, where you spend your money, there your heart is. Yep. And um, the scripture would be Matthew 6, 21, where, where your treasure is. That's right. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Yep, yep. Where you spend money reflects your true priorities. You may say, I put God first. Wait a second, you're buying this, you're buying all these things you bought the last two years that you didn't even need. You're accumulating debt, you're causing problems in your relationship with your spouse, and you're not giving properly to God's work. So that's, that's where your real priority is. It's not, it's not, people may say God is number one in my life, but he really isn't. Often it's the material things. So it seems like she was making all the decisions by herself. So James 1 verse 5 talks about praying and asking God for wisdom. Absolutely, so yeah. in this particular case, uh, it appears that that wasn't done. But I think the bigger picture also is uh, the role of her husband. It says that her husband is also a Christian. Mm -hmm. So they both should have been you know, consulting and praying about all the issues together because her problems are also his problems, which are the family's problems. Yeah. So take it from that perspective. I agree. They should pray together. But she's running up these credit cards and he doesn't know until later on. That, that creates a few uh, exciting uh, discussions. So here's what I had. The real underlying problem is that Janice has violated many biblical financial principles, perhaps unknowingly. Some of the biblical principles she's violated are as follows. She lacked contentment. This was um, mentioned because she, you can see it just because she's spending more than what God had provided to her. She wasn't living within the income God had provided. She did not develop and implement a budget or a spending plan, which we're admonished to do in the parable of the tower. She, she just kept spending. She didn't have a, a budget to follow. She took on too much debt by running up the balances on her credit cards. She did not know where she's at financially. Scripture says we need to know where we're at, we're at financially, Proverbs 27, 23. She didn't really know. She was just buying it and running it up and and then getting a sort of a surprise as, as the credit card bills come in, but you shouldn't be surprised. You should keep track of it. Janice did not plan her spending properly, especially with respect to assuming debt. Uh, she did not foresee the, for the future financial problems, even though after she paid off her credit cards with that personal line of credit, she, she did the same thing all over again and ended up having, they're now in a mess again, and they're probably going to have to take out another personal line of credit. I love Proverbs 22.3. A prudent man sees danger and takes refuge, but the simple keep going and suffer for it. Once somebody's done the debt restructuring once, a light should go on, indicate, hey, we got an issue here. But so many people think, hey, um, I've solved my financial problems. Sometimes the bank will even convince them of that. And, and basically, um, uh, they carry on with what they're doing. So um, was it initially wrong for Janice and Harold to get a personal line of credit to pay off the credit cards? Was there any... Um, any benefit to that, of getting the personal line of credit to pay off the credit cards? Yes, I would say the personal line of credit would be at a lower rate than the credit card um, interest rate. So they would be saving some uh, money on interest there. Okay. Thank you very much. That's, that's a good comment. Yep. But it also just gave her the opportunity to spend more. Yeah. The, the benefit of the read. The benefit of the debt reduction, debt restructuring, is it lowers the interest rates. But um, then people have to exercise the discipline not to run up the credit cards again. I think the only way we can know for certain is if it's right or wrong is was that what God wanted them to do? And so many times we make these financial decisions without any consultation with God who is our creator. Um, to say, is it the right thing? Do you want me to go this way or do you not? And then, as you said earlier, when you have that peace from God, you make the decision. Yeah. Yeah, they need to go before the Lord. Actually, before you do that, that restructuring, you should go back and look and find out, why am I in debt in the first place? But doing the debt restructuring is fine to lower the interest costs, but she, they needed to go a whole lot more. And that's, that's what uh, we talked about here. So now you're, you're, you're Janice's financial advisor. Uh, what biblically-based financial advice would you give her, and can you provide a reference to Scripture? Here's where it gets tough. What advice would you give her, and uh, can you provide a reference to Scripture, if you can? If you can provide a reference to Scripture, then you know you're giving biblically-based biblically financial advice. To borrow from a rich friend who doesn't pay interest. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you have 0% interest, probably, but uh, that's not the long-term solution. But okay, okay, that's funny. Okay, what else, what would you advise her from a biblical perspective? 
I would encourage her to have um, a little chat with God and see what he wants her to do. Okay. Take it before the Lord and get some wisdom and direction from God. I agree. Go ahead. I'm trying to remember the scripture here, but it's, it relates to budgeting. Yeah. Right? That um, you must know where you're... Didn't use, like... You know, where she's spending her money. And yeah, Proverbs 27, 23. Yeah, be sure you know the condition of your flocks. Yes. Give careful attention to your herds. That's the one. Yeah. She didn't really know. She was just going off and just doing what she felt like. A lot of it was probably impulse buying. One of the best ways to deal with impulse buying, it doesn't matter how good the deal is, don't buy it at the time. Wait for 30 days, pray about it. By then often the desire will go away. Um, and if God still wants you to get it, he'll have it there and then make sure you got the money for it. But, uh, and, and obviously for her, she's got to avoid the shopping mall. Go ahead. I have the, um, just the, the story of Adam and Eve in the garden coming to mind and just thinking of how important it is for the two of them as a couple to be accountable to one another and just to um, have those conversations. And Harold could have been helping Janice and Janice could have been seeking counsel from Harold to work those things out and, and mm. working on the relationship instead of looking to separate ways. Okay. And, and she might not have fallen in the same problem three times in a row to have to go through debt restructuring if where was Adam when he took the fruit <laughs> from the tree they're, they're both we either win together or we lose together yeah, yeah. and I think we need to be um, joined together in our relationships too okay thanks Terry Lynn you, you came from cold, cold water or? okay area, area, yeah. area okay we'll talk later if anyone lacks knowledge, let him ask. Okay. And um, she evidently lacks uh, financial n knowledge, and um, she needs to ask God's wisdom, you know, in um, how she spends her money. Yep. So if she, as I said, she needs wisdom, and that is only through praying and having a relationship with God. Okay. She doesn't have him in the budget at all. Okay, thank you. Lots of response here. Uh, probably, um, you know, as we all know, the, the Bible says that there's safety in the council of many. Yeah, yeah. So probably I would recommend them to go to Top La Tom Copeland Ministries. <laughs> <laughs> they need some biblically based financial counsel. Yeah, yeah. I think it's important if you're going to uh, deal with budget or whatever is that both be on the same page, oh, yeah. you know, and um, make decisions together and yeah. stick with it. That's one of the suggested solutions is husband and wife should develop a family budget together. And also, I'm a strong believer it should be our money, not his money, her money. But there are cases where you're, see, you're gonna see in the last case study where sometimes one spouse has to take control if the other spouse is irresponsible. Go ahead. I, I think in, in the decision making, um, Janice was worried all the time about what they needed and how they were going to get over certain situations. So the Bible verse that talks about do not worry about what you're going to eat, what you're okay. going to drink, what you're going to wear, because God's aware of your needs and he'll yeah. help you through it. it it's, it's difficult to depend that way, but... Um, if, if she was trusting that God was going to meet those needs, she may have been able to make some better decisions with her husband, knowing that yeah. God knew their situation. I think just talking about that a minute, one of the things she should do is trust God to meet her needs, her emotional needs. Remember, one of the reasons she's going to the shopping mall is to try to fulfill an emotional need because of their, the problem in the relationship with her husband and with their rebellious teenagers. So go to God and meet those needs and um, and and then she probably won't go to the shopping mall as often. One last one, and then I'll go to the next one. So mm -hmm. I think um, that relates as well to Deuteronomy 6.5, and love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. And so if you're doing that, then you'll also follow Colossians, which is to set your mind on heavenly things and not on mm -hmm. earthly things. And so mm -hmm. to go to God for all those needs, emotional, physical, financial, um, and whether you're single or you're married, 
um, that, that he alone can fill those needs. I agree. Excellent comments. Let me push on here because we I want to get to the last case study, which is a real complicated one. So here's what I had on what Janice should do. Um, they, they need to learn God's way of, of managing money, um, probably both of them. Um, Jan, Janice needs to understand Christ's promise to meet our needs, not necessarily wants and desires. A lot of what she's buying are, not, are wants and desires, they're not needs. Janice and Harold together should develop and implement a family budget to ensure they're spending less than their income and use the surplus to pay down debt. And within that budget, they should have a reasonable amount, it might be 20 bucks a week or 40 bucks a week, whatever they can afford, for the things that Janice wants to buy that are wants and desires. It's not that you can never have any wants and desires, but have a, a modest amount. Use cash, not credit cards. Credit cards allows you to spend money you don't have. And then that'll give her, her spending money in a sense. And if they're really tight for money, maybe, maybe they can't allow anything there. But often, husband and wife each having an allowance of 20 bucks a week or whatever they can afford to spend as they like is, is a good way to deal with this and, and use cash. Um, they need to learn to be content with the level of income they have, especially Janice. They need to save for unexpected expenditures. Proverbs 21.20 says, In the house of the wise there's a storage of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. These, this couple is following in, into the foolish category. They're spending all their regular income. So if an unexpected expenditure comes along, what's going to happen? They're going to be forced into debt. So, um, and that can be a car repair, a house repair, whatever. They need to seek godly financial advice. Um, she needs to change the way she thinks about money and material things by meditating on appropriate scriptures. Um, and Janice should attend a biblical financial um, workshop. She needs to go probably through like the 12-week study that I have that's very in-depth and extensive. That's where we find there's the most change. And Harold should attend one as well because I'm sure he's not perfect. He's got lots to learn. And, and the more that they both understand God's way of money, they're both going to be more on the same page and they can help out others, they can help out their kids as well. And credit cards, Janice maybe needs to take the scissors and cut them up. Um, or another way is you can put them in a, in a, in a, like a, uh, in something and freeze it in the freezer. So when you want to ac access to the credit card, it's got to thaw out first. There's, do something, throw it in the drawer or lock it in the drawer and you can only get access to it if they both, uh, both agree. So um, what would the consequences be if any of the following one occurred? Harold was out of work for some time. Interest rates on their mortgage and personal line of credit increased. By the way, Bank of Canada has raised rates recently. There's a pretty good chance it's going to go up gradually over the next two to three years. I don't know that. But a lot of people are going to be, be stung. And it's, the same is happening in the U.S. as well. Or what happens if the fair market value of their home decreased like it did in the early 90s or uh, in the 2008 recession? What if any of these things happen? What do you think the results would be? It's going to, it's going to be disaster. I'm going to answer this one. It's, it's, it's just going to be disastrous. Everybody assumes they're going to have their job forever, but it doesn't always happen that way. You can work for a big firm. It doesn't matter. They can do, the ownership can change. They can be restructuring. You can work in all, in all kinds of places. And, and um, our income is not guaranteed. And so often when one spouse loses, you know, loses their job, um, it, can, it just can be dis disastrous if our interest rates go up. Here's some memory verses I encourage you to meditate on after the uh, session. The wise man saves for the future, but the foolish man spends whatever he gets. Proverbs 21.20 Be sure you know the condition of your flocks. Give careful attention to your herds. Proverbs 27.23 And the borrower is servant to the lender. Proverbs 22.7 You even meditate on these scriptures and the few other ones we give um, today, and I think it will really help you. Now, I'm not going to go through number two, Doug and Irene, because we don't have enough time. You can read it. It's sort of similar. This is a couple that was mismanaging money, getting into a lot of debt. They learned God's way of managing money. And within three years, they had paid off all their credit cards, their personal lines of credit. And, um, and, and they had a positive cash flow. And, and within another, they, they see a plan now that within 10 years, they'll have their mortgage paid off. I've seen lots of cases lots of them, thousands, where God's people have learned God's way of managing money. It doesn't usually happen overnight, but within two or three years, there's usually a huge change. Sometimes within a year, we can see a big change, and they can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but if you don't do anything and you just keep with the bad spending habits and accumulating debt, it's going to be a problem. 